now welcome to part two on this new flue gas analyzer the Sauerman Psyker 130 now if you haven't seen part one it was all about unboxing this absolutely fantastic carrying case and seeing exactly what we got now one of the things I did mention in part one was the rubber boot it felt to me like it was latex and I am massively allergic to latex and when I spoke to Michael from Salomon they're made of latex so this is the bare unit I've had to remove the boot because of my allergy to latex now what Michael's just told me today is they're going to send me a boot from America which is going to be made of silica rubber rather than latex rubber so we'll look forward to getting that but for the rest of the videos on this analyzer it's going to be bare not me the analyzer anyway in this video what we're going to do is we're going to show what all this is about here and how to turn it on and set up the unit so i've done enough waffling let's get on with it now when you're connecting your probe to the analyzer you can see they're color coded so this has an orange o-ring which goes into the orange section this one has a black o-ring which goes into the black section don't go off this blue cap that's nothing to do with the colors it's about the o-ring and then your temperature probe goes into the ta connection here so all you do is plug in your black one and you can see the black o-ring connector is going into the bowl now this orange connector is just to blank off your positive pressure so that's your p plus pressure uh, sample point that's all it's doing it's not two connections it's just a way of blanking off that because if you didn't then you'll be getting dodgy readings because the products would be coming out and then this one because it's a standard k probe it just goes in the small end into the small bit and the bigger end into the big hole so that's how it basically goes now you will also see there's another connection hose here which is for your ambient co or your co2 uh, probe which we don't have one of those yet Michael said he's getting me one and he'll let me have a look and we can do another video on that. So that's where your ambient probe would connect in. Now, if you're going to do tightness testing, first of all, we need to remove all this. And then out of the bag, we need to get our test probe. Now I've removed it out of the bag. Now, uh, Michael assures me this is a silicon hose, not a um, latex one now the latex boots we've got here i believe after speaking to michael today they've ended the latex ones um, they should be uh, silicon rubber when they come out so if you do have a latex allergy like me by the time you get yours you won't need to worry because it'll be silicon rubber not latex now again, you can see this is coloured orange. Well, hopefully you can see this is coloured orange and it just goes into the P plus sign here so you can get your positive pressure. Now, the next one, the green one, is a negative pressure. So if you were doing your test on something like the flu test on a Worcester, then you would connect into that one. So basically, that would go into there but it's colored orange for when you're doing your tightness test because that's your positive pressure test so that is what you get in underneath the only other thing i need to show you really is the charging point here and the charging cable which is in here so it's your c type charger like you get in your iphone now I can get it out of the bag so that just is the C connector and it just fits into there like that and then obviously that's your USB connection so when you're charging it 
it's simple and when you are charging it actually comes up on the screen and tells you that your analyzer's charging anyway that's enough waffle on that now so let's get into the trading room next door and actually look how we first turn this on and the steps that are required to make sure we get this working one we set it up for the right country two we set it up for the light right language and three we've got our uk tests on there so come on let's get on with it now the screen on this psyche 130 is four inches from top to bottom the 030 screen though is three inches and the 230 is the same screen so this is a touch screen just like you would get on your mobile phone now let's see how this Sauerman Psycho 130 actually works so we've got a big blue button here which is our on and off button so you press and hold that for three seconds and the screen should come on now down here it's telling us the serial number and the make and model and also here it's saying that and at the top here it says skip now one thing you don't do is press the skip button because we don't want to skip because we need to go through the setup so we need to press the start button here now you can see it's the languages and it's set on french obviously because it's made in france but we need to find the UK which is here so we can click on UK and now press the next button you can now see it's automatically put us into English so we don't need to do anything on that but if we did want to put it into French or Italian or German or Portuguese then we can just press that button so we press the next now we've got the time zones so here you can see if we're in london in winter we want plus zero in summer we want plus one which i think that's what we're in but if you want to change it you just press this button here so we want so we can now press next now we have our day month and year so you can see it's the 20th of the 5th 2024 we can either do it in the american way which is the month day or year or we can do it the uk way or most of europe which is the day month and year which we're already in so that's already set up for us so we can press next next we've got our time so our time is 1507 and again we can use the up and down arrows to move the time you can also see we've got it in 24 hours so you can change that to 12 hours so we can press the net now it's asking us do we want the pump on after auto zero in well we can put the pump on manually and you'll see that later so we can just press the save here and now it's going to auto zero for us now it says smoke probe must be plugged to the analyzer and out of the stack that's americanism so basically your sample probe needs to be outside the boiler when it's doing this initial purge so it needs to be in fresh air not inside the boiler so even though we've set it to english it's still giving us a bit of american speak that's why I am super excited to bring this video to you. So now it's done its actual purging. Our screen has now come on and it's all set up for us. So we've got some icons down the bottom, which is our pump on and off. We have our print and we have our save. This is our icon for other measurements and I'll show you what that does in a bit. Now this screen is changeable. So if you don't like the order in which this screen is in, we can actually change it. So first of all, we need to go into the settings and we need to now go into the settings itself. And you can see now we've got general analysis, measurement units, date saving or printer. So we need to go into the analysis and if we go up 
we now can see it says display configurations so we need to press onto that and now you can see in the order what it's set at so if you don't want the o2 at the top you can press the down arrow and it will move it down for you or you could press the up arrow and it will move it all for you so you initially tick the ones you want as you can see there's lots to get in there so there's your co and co2 which ours hasn't been ticked so we'll need that so now you can see the co co2 is there so if i want to take that up so it's between the co and the co2 we can we can press the up arrow and then we want to move it again and then we want to move it again and then we want to move it again and there you go now can you can see it's not very sensitive this screen because i've still got the plastic on it there look if you want your screen to be more sensitive remove this but i'm going to leave it on for now because the trainees are going to be using these and we don't want them damaging the screen so it's going to be a bit of a screen protector so for the sake of a little bit of sensitivity we're going to leave it at that so you can see how easy it is to change these up and down you just press the down arrow or an up arrow it's as simple as that when you want to come out we press the back arrow we press the back arrow again so we're back into the settings so we can press here and we've got the gas analyst so we can go into that and you can now see our co co2 is here so we've got our o2 our co our co2 our co co2 ratio i guess that's efficiency and all the other stuff remember we can change these add them or take them away depending on what you're doing now that is all the turning on and setting up of the Sauerman Psyker 130. Now the next bit in this video what I'm going to show you is I don't know of any other flue gas analyzer on the UK market that you're going to be able to do what I'm about to show you. So let's get on with it and see what it is and if you do know of it any other flue gas analyzer, what you can do, what I'm going to show you, and put it down in the comments below. So what we need to do is we need to click on analyzer information. So what we've got here is, it says, next service center calibration due 27th of the 12th, 24. It says service calibration, gas sensor information, identification number, model number, serial number, firmware version. Then you can see at the bottom there it says the battery is at 100% and there is 100% of the memory. Now on the 130 and the 230 you can save information to the actual analyzer itself. On the 030 you can't save any information to the actual analyzer. Now this is where this differs to everybody else. If we look on the gas sensor information and click on there, you can now see it says our CO and O2 sensor. Now remember, this analyzer has these two sensors. You can also have another sensor in here, which is your nitrous oxide sensor. And that would show up here if it was fitted. This one isn't. So this one doesn't have a CO2 sensor, it has a CO and an O2, and then between those two, it guesses the CO2. Anyway, if I click on the CO sensor, you can see all the information for this sensor, and you can see its life estimation is full. Now, if we go back, and we look on the O2, you can see it's exactly the same. So you can see all the information is here. Now then, this is where it will absolutely blow you away because I do not know of any other flue gas analyzer on the market that does this. So if this drops down to around here, you can actually change the O2, and if I go back, 
the CO sensors yourself. So you get in touch with Sowerman and you say, can you send me two sensors? I want my CO and my O2 sensor and they will send you those in the post after you've paid around about 80 quid plus fat for your um, O2 sensor and about 150 quid I think it is including the VAT, I think. Anyway, somewhere around there for your CO sensor. And it comes with all this information because when you plug this into this, so it's only a matter of there's four screws on there. So there's two here and there's two at the bottom there. And you can take this back off and you will be able to change the two sensors. Now, as soon as you change the sensors, all this stuff on the screen here changes automatically, including the green bar, and you will be in full calibration again. Unlike a lot of analyzers where you have to send these off for the new sensors to be put in, or they tell you that the sensors need to be changed, on this analyzer, it tells you where the life of the sensor should be. And if you want to change them yourself, you can do. So for that year, it would just be the cost of the sensors because it will automatically be calibrated. If you don't want to change them yourself, you don't have to. You can send them in to be changed. But this is something what's come from America, which allows you to change the sensors in this analyzer. It complies to all the... English regulations are the UK regulations for analyzers because we have to have them calibrated every year because once you put the sensors in, all this will change and give you the correct information. I think that is a massive game changer and it's going to be a big wake-up call for all the other flue gas analyzer manufacturers. What do you think about that, guys? Put it in the comments down below. Now, to turn the analyzer off, all we do is press and hold the blue button again for three seconds. And as you can see now, it's now saying it's purging the device. It says disconnect the hose from the analyzer and empty the water out of the trap. And as you can see, the machine is now off. Next, when we turn it back on again, so when I hold it down for three seconds again, Yes, it's still going to go through its purge process, but we don't need to go through the settings again because it's remembered what we've done before. And as you can see now, we can go into any of the settings and it's ready for us to be used. Simple as that. Now that's a look at the Sourman Psycho 130 flue gas analyzer, how to set it up and get it ready for working. In part three, what we're going to do is actually use it and uh, see what this little beauty can do. So hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. But let me know what you think guys in the comments down below because I'm very interested to find out what you think, especially about those sensors. Cheers.